we think of the cross and we think of what Jesus Christ did for us, which is fantastic. But then a lot of times that's what we stop. We don't really realize the position that God has put us in so that we can live the life that God wants us to live. So when I saw this path of salvation, uh, which I went over last week, I just want to touch on that again because I think it's a perfect way to explain the gospel to someone that does not know Jesus Christ. And it's a better way to explain the gospel because what it does is show the covenant that we make with God is like a marriage covenant, but deeper than that. So what we're doing is we're, we're the Jews, as you see in the bottom line, the bottom row, is the Jews do the feast, and then the top row, Jesus Christ is fulfilling the feast. And so then the first four steps is really the picture of salvation that we walk it out. So what we do is we put the blood over the doorpost of our hearts. And then what we do is say, Lord, cut the sin out of my life. Circumcise my heart. Cut the flesh, the battle of the flesh. And let me surrender my life to you. And what I do then is I go into the symbolism of baptism, which baptism is meaning that I'm giving my life to the Lord. So God spilled his blood as his part of the covenant, and we know he will not break it. And then what we do is we give our life back to God. We say, cut this sin out, I'm going to bury the old lifestyle, I'm going to come up out of the water, make a statement to the world, and I'm going to end with you, God, and with the church people, all of us together, that I will walk with God, but then God gives us his heart, which is in the feast there, in the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit then is planted in our lives, so that we then have the power, because it's only through the power of the Holy Spirit we can walk with God. If we don't have His heart to listen to, we're going to be the way of the world. Then once we get that concept of what that's all about, then it makes it easier for us to deal with those issues of the battle of the flesh. So the next slide that we come up with here is circumcised, therefore, the foreskin of your heart, and being, and, and being no more stiffness. So now what happens is what we do is we accept Jesus Christ as our own personal Savior, and we still get into the trap of saying, I'm going to do it my way. I know better than you, God. You're the best in the Garden of Eden. I can do it myself. I don't need you. And we don't understand the power of the Holy Spirit and what He has in our life, so that we are constantly in a battle. Even though we've accepted the Lord, we're brand new babies. I had the privilege by using this outline to lead people to the Lord. Then you go back and you talk to them, and they're babies, they're children in the Lord, and there's a lot that they don't know. And their church is filled with people that don't really know what to do because they've never become mature enough to understand that walk. And there's a battle that goes on because the devil wants us to lose, right? God wants us to win. That's why he went to the cross. So I'm going to do something a little different this morning, because I'm not a normal preacher. <laughs> um, I asked TJ and Ray to talk about this a little bit, so I want them to come up here. They're going to have to talk loud because we don't have mics, okay? I should have thought of that, had mics. And I was going to ask them, and they can we'll start with PJ because she's the lady of the house, right? Then Ray. You got a mic there? Okay, so he's going to hand you a mic. And what I'd like to have you do is, is the battle of the flesh. I heard that you accepted Christ when you were real young, right? Yes. Okay, you tell me about the battle of flesh, and Ray's going to do the same thing. You're only going to use that. Makes it easier. Okay, so then, then what you want to do is, what did God do in your life to make you finally turn around and say, I want God's way? And you do the same thing. So you guys have got the same thing. All right. I was so stiff-necked, I ended up on drugs, lost my children, lost my freedom, um, ended up being touched a little bit by the Lord. He didn't give up on me throughout any of this. Um, got my kids home, ruined a 17-year marriage, and ended up living on a nature trail with no roof over my head, no nothing. And I finally realized, okay, I can't do this by myself, no longer. And I said, God, just put me on the path that you want me on, show me your light. And the next thing I know, I'm meeting Leonard and Marcy, and my world has completely changed. I went back to school. Um, I've got a really good job. I'm totally in love with this man. <laughs> um, 
But, I mean, life has completely changed, and that's because I surrender to the Lord. Amen. If it wasn't for the Lord, I would not be here. I attempted suicide about five years ago, and God put his hand on my heart and said, this is not the road you want. So he's been with me every step of the way, but he let me realize that I had to learn to let him do it. And I'm very stubborn that way. But thank you to the Lord. Thank you to Leonard, Marcy, and Leanne. I mean, I wouldn't know God without these three people. Well, mine's kind of the same thing. I fought for, with uh, alcoholism and drug addiction for over 30 years. And uh, I start to follow the Lord a little bit, and then I think, oh, no, let's go back the other way. And I just keep going back to drugs and alcohol, drugs and alcohol. And uh, I'm a firm believer if something's not broken, don't fix it, but I was broken bad. And it ended up... Um, <laughs> Just uh, 15 months ago, actually, a little over 15 months ago, I ended up living at the UGM down in downtown Seattle, uh, going through their men's recovery program. And uh, I was just sitting there, and right after I first got there, I said, you know what, this hasn't worked for my life at all. Um, something's got to be done different. So um, I gave my life over to Christ, and uh, I don't see any other way of doing it now, because things, he does not give me anything I cannot handle. And uh, it's just, it's a great walk now. So, they're really good. Thank you, guys. You know, it's interesting in seeing how God puts it together to the church. We're the church. And if it wasn't for the church, the world, the body of believers, the world would not have a chance. Because Jesus died, but they need to hear about Jesus through people. And then when you hear stories like Ray and PJ, I remember when PJ first came, we didn't know anything about PJ. Now, Marcy and I, just say a little bit about it, because Marcy, I, I've done work with, with these, this type of stuff before, with my first wife. And one of my prayer requests is the next lady that I marry has to put up with my radical, okay? <laughs> <laughs> and so here she is, we're just six months into marriage, something like that, and we're on the telephone talking to Ray, and Ray says, the only place that I can find peace, the kingdom of peace, is at your house. Can I come? I said, well, sure. But he says, well, one other thing. I've got to bring my girlfriend with me. <laughs> <laughs> now, we don't know anything about PJ. And here's Marcy sitting across from him. We haven't discussed this, right? So I'm going, <clears throat> I wonder how she's going to handle that. <laughs> and I said, on one condition. And Marcy was going right along because that's the spirit. That's the people that love people. This church loves people and I you know it and we need to reach out and we need to reach out to the people with each other and we need to reach out into the world because that's what it's all about so PJ came to our house not knowing who she was I said the condition is you're no longer boyfriend or girlfriend you are sister and brother <laughs> you get your room he gets his room and that's the way it goes and that's where we started and those conditions you Come. Now, PJ is a total stranger. So she's sitting at the table as we're having dinner, and I said, How in the world? What is your background? Who are you? And she told me the background that she shared was just total chaos. And I was literally in tears realizing that world because I've never been in that world. And then Marcy got into the thing and started talking to her and said, why did you come here? She says, I was so desperate because I got my kids back and it took me a big battle to get my kids back. And I was headed down the path going the wrong way again. And I cried out to God and I said, God, I'll do anything. And that phone call came. And she came. Marcy, afterwards, uh, we had to kick Ray out. <laughs> And then CJ thought she was going to get picked out. And Marcy turned around and said, no, he's just not following the rules. <laughs> and it needed to be done because Ray turned around and he went in and got where he get help. Okay? So then PJ was thinking, she's going to get kicked out. Marcy says, no, you're our daughter. What do you want to do with your life? And she went to school. So that's what God can do in life. And now we sit here and we talk about their lives, and they're probably way out there compared to us, right? And we said, well, that can't happen to me. Well, we know what Yeah? God says when you're helping with people, in the scripture, say, be careful because you can be caught in the same trap. 
because we're human beings. And because we're human beings, we can easily get into the trap of Satan because Satan constantly throws his scuds out there. So I call them scuds because they're rotten scuds and he wants to destroy us. Okay, when you read the scriptures, it says, Since therefore Christ has suffered in the flesh, arm yourself with the same way of thinking. For whoever has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin so as to live for the rest of the time in the flesh no longer for human passions, but for the will of God. So when you look at that verse, he said Jesus Christ suffered in the flesh. When you read it in Matthew, you can read it for yourself. In Matthew 4, he, went, he, was, he didn't eat anything for 40 days. Then he, got, he went out into the wilderness. Do you think he was tempted because he was hunger? Because Jesus Christ was fully man and fully God. So he understood how the battles that we took place. Now, if Jesus Christ did not go to the cross and do what he's supposed to do, where would we be? No hope. Nothing. But God knew before he came that he had to die for our sins and pay the penalty of sin. And he wants us to think the same way. He says, now because I laid my life down for you, I want you to lay your life down for me. And basically, it's total surrender. Because see, when you stop to think about it, what is sin? We kind of put degrees on sin and all the different things, but really sin is disobedience. I'll do it my way, and I want you to stay out of my life for it. And it can be on the positive side. I use this, this kind of expression with some people. I said, now I went to Bible college for three years. I was in my fourth year, and God put me in business. I could, said, I could have said to God, I want to be a preacher, and I don't want to be in the business world. Good done? But the Holy Spirit, my, my gift is motivation. That's what I do. I love motivating people. That's who I am. To want to preach every week, forget it. <laughs> All right? I can do it. But to do it every week, forget it. I, I love to listen to Jason. You know why I love to listen to Jason? Because he's a true prophet. A prophet is a person that can take the word of God and make it so that we can understand it and then learn to apply it. And I love to hear it because I keep, keep gathering these nuggets. Because I say to Jason, I said, I'm not going to learn that stuff. It's too much, too much. But I want this nugget, I want this nugget, I want this nugget, I want this nugget. Why do I want those nuggets? So I can go out and tell the world about Jesus and use the nuggets to people help people understand what it's all about. So that's me. Now I can fill in once in a while, and I'm glad it's only once in a while because I get nervous up here. But anyway. <laughs> what we want to do then is understand the role where God wants to do it and surrender to that. Because wisdom, the Bible says this is a precious word of God. Where do you get wisdom? Right here. Wisdom is knowing the truth and applying it. But what happens is these scuds come in and we know the truth. And we as Christians turn around and say, I don't want to do that. I want to do it all. And I don't want to meddle. Because we could meddle. You know, I look at situations and I say, I'm going to meddle all of that. I'm not going to meddle. Because if I would tell P&J, and I tell them all the time, quit that smoking, I'd have to look at myself and say, how come I'm so fat? Because <laughs> it's interesting the battles that we have to go through, right? And we're always battling the flesh. It's always an issue. But God wants us to die to those battles and surrender our life because wisdom is knowing the truth, and the truth will set you free. Wisdom is taking the truth and applying it into our lives and making it work. And God says the only way that you can do that is by the power of the Holy Spirit that's in you. Now we go to the next verse here. And because you are sons, God has sent the Spirit of His Son into, his, into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir through God, formerly, when you did not know God, you were enslaved to those that by nature are not gods. But now that you have come to know God, or rather to be known by God, how can you turn back again to the weak and worthless elementary principles of the world whose slaves you were that you want to be once more? 
When you look at there, it says it says that formerly when you uh, let's see, when you were enslaved to those by the nature of not gods. Okay, those are, are are things that the world picks up and, and uses and say, my God is. And our world in America is there's a lot of gods. Materialism, vacations, <coughs> homes, jobs. Those are all gods that we get entrapped with, which are really not gods. But we worship those things because those are the things that we want. If you're really going to worship God, you will do it with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength and worship Jesus Christ because of what He did at the cross and surrender our life to Him, then we're really free. But when we enslave ourselves once again to the ways of the world, we never get victory. We never will have victory. Because victory doesn't come through the, the, the thing that the devil throws at us. So when we stop to think about it, think about what God wants for you. In the beginning of the verses said, we are his sons and daughters. Now think of that. Meditate on that. Here's a God that made the universe. Everything that we see and beyond what we see, galaxies deep, 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 a God that's that great wants us to be in a relationship with Him. My goodness. A God that goes to the Israelite people and takes them out of slavery and you have the pillar, two pillars, the flame at night and the cloud by the day. The sea opens up and destroys the enemy. And we go on and on. That God wants us to have a relationship with Him. And then we grab a hold of the little gods of materialism and say, that's my God. Whoa. God says, I want to have a love relationship with you. I want a walking, talking, living relationship with you so that you can live in victory. With all the stuff that you're going to go through because of the fall of man, we went down and we have a battle. And if we don't have the Holy Spirit in our life, we will not win that battle. We have to have the Holy Spirit in our lives to give us the power to get through these issues that are in life. And they are thrown at us all the time. And you can look around and see all the battles in, with, that we have just in this church. I'm glad to see Mickey and Stan here and some of the kids because they've got a battle going on. They just lost their dad. You think that's a battle? Sure it's a battle. You're late to lose your dad. But the good thing is dad's with God. He's with Jesus Christ. We have hope. Nobody else does. And we need to hang on to those things and understand who God is. And when Marcy and I are praying, many times we start out in our prayer rejoicing. And I sit there and I, I sit in awe and I go, we're actually in the presence of God, talking with Him. And yet we get trapped in the things of the world and these little things that take us off the wrong way and can lead us into a wrong direction and gets us back into slavery because we're not paying attention to the relationship that we have in Him. So it has to do with a lot of things. And I, I, I'm going to get into this verse because we need to understand the battle that's going on. It says this, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and application, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, my brother, it says that do not be anxious about anything. Is there things in our lives that we get anxious about? My, we get a lot of anxiety. <laughs> You know what that verse says? It says, give it to me. Because that's what it says. Be anxious about everything. Don't be anxious about anything. But everything with current application, with thanksgiving. When Marcy and I were, we got first married and stuff like that. My home has always been for, for years is the kingdom of peace. And the kingdom of peace means I'm going to walk with God and what the battle is. And I ask God to bring me someone that will understand all the issues that I have in my life. And people have asked me, and I'll, I'll get into it a little bit, people ask me, would you marry someone that went through a divorce? I said, yes, if the person learned something. Because I'm no better than anybody else, right? But I will make sure, and I want to, and I have a prayer request of all these things that went on. And this is what I want to do. A wonderful 38 years with my first wife. 
and she thought Alzheimer's, which some of you probably don't know, and I lost her. I wasn't in my vocabulary to ever get married again, because I was never going to lose my wife. But God said, I'm taking her home. So Peter looked at my list and said, you can't get that, it's too much. With God, all things are possible. Amen. Now, Marcy was not exactly what I would pick out in the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going through this stuff and I'm going, I, I, I'm telling the story because I tell the story just to let you know that we all go through battles and we're trying to commit your life to the Lord. And I can't go too long. Okay, so anyway. <laughs> so then what happened is I, I had this list Marcy and I got together on a trip. We got we talked to each other on the phone after getting through eat Harmony and all that stuff. And one of the things that I said to her, and she knew that I was the person before I knew that she was the gal. Remember, I lost my wife, and it was only just a few months later, and I have daughters, and they're emotional. I say goodbye to my wife many, many, many times, so when she passed away, she passed away, God took her home. About six months later, I decided to go on eat Harmony because I wanted to go that route because I had a year or more. I had time. And I knew with the way they said it that the person that came back would be pretty true. Okay? And I figured I had a lot of time. My first wife went to the mission field for two years before we got married. So I wasn't in no hurry. So in the conversation between her and I, one of the things I said to her, Marcy, you'll never be happy. And I say this to the men and to the families. And I said to the world over and over again, you, you as a woman will never, ever, 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 ever be happy unless you're married to a man that truly loves God. <clears throat> and the world tells us otherwise. It's all other things. But the bottom line, if you love the Lord our God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, you will treat your wife right because you are the priest of your home. And because you're the priest of your home, you become the servant of the home, and you're not the master of the home. You become the master of the home by being the servant of the home. And if the society could understand that, we would live better than we've ever lived before because we as men need to become humble because we have a big responsibility. <coughs> And I think God requires more out of us than men to be able to walk with Him and bring our family into the kingdom of peace. And if that man is not walking with God, he cannot truly love. Why? Because it's only God they love, God love, that works. Because His love has to go through us to our wives first, then to our family, then to our children. And if we're not walking that way, it will never work. She heard that before from somebody else, so that was on her list. So when he harmed me going through, I said that to Goma. Okay? Mm -hmm. And there are a couple other things. So what happened is we're going down the road. Now, usually I plan things. I lay things out. I like surprises. So I invited her to a Gaither concert. So when we were down this road trip, she's saying, oh, no, no, he's going to propose to me at a Gaither concert. And I said, oh, right, right, I thought of that. <laughs> but we were trying along and I had no intention of getting married but as the, as the pieces were coming together I had my list, she had her list and God put it all together and I said to her going how do I find someone that fills the list Lord she's too tall <laughs> <laughs> because by that time I was ready to bail <laughs> So, but then I sit there and I say, Lord, I look at the list and I look how you put things together from beyond the list. She's beyond the list. And she's not what, in some ways, I, or, whoa, Lord, I'm supposed to marry her, huh? Okay. <laughs> and we're in the restaurant and we're talking about all this. And I said, well, if the Lord really wants me to do this, uh, we might as well get married now because I planned a trip with my daughter, Amy, to go to Cancun. So if God really wants us to get married, and there's no way for you to get on the airplane, if he puts you on the airplane, you won't get married. <laughs> God put on the airplane. <laughs> then he arranged it for us to go together, two Cancun together. It all worked out. 
And then, of course, you, you, I called my Minda up and I said, uh, we're going to get married. She said, how do you know you love her? You haven't even dated her very long. What is love? Huh? Uh -huh. Love is committing to God and doing what God wants you to do and walk in faith. When I look at the list and how God put that all together, sure I have a lot of doubts. But I knew what I wanted and I asked God for something. And I know that physical love comes in time. It doesn't happen just overnight. It's not just looking at somebody and saying, ah, I'm in love. Now the girls do that, but guys don't. Okay? And it's been good. It's been a good ride. In fact, the first time I met Leanne, which I'm a total stranger to her, I go to a restaurant to pick her up and put her on the road, and she says, I got your license plates. <laughs> As we went on this trip. Now, the reason why I tell that story is that all of us go through battles, and we need to understand that we don't become anxious about anything because it says this. Anything with prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. In other words, you give your prayer and your supplication, all your stuff in prayer to God, and with thanksgiving, God, we know you're going to take care of it. Is that hard to do? Yes. Yeah, because all the battles we've gone through, we haven't learned to surrender to the Lord. We haven't surrendered to what God wants to do in our lives. We haven't learned to walk daily with God, because faith is simply... Like Jason explained, faith is nothing more than a child that's looking up into a mother's arms. So we as children, his, we're our, his children. We look up into the eyes of Jesus and we say, I trust you. And then my faith grows because I know I can trust God. So if God puts the pieces together, I know it will work. And my flesh will say, and my daughter will say, you're crazy. And I say, yes, but God put it together. And I'm going to trust what God is doing. And then, in fact, I thought we just got married in six years, not November. That seems just like yesterday, okay? Been a fun ride. But it's only a good ride because we give it to God. But now it goes on and it says this. He's going to give us the peace. But he turns around in the verses and he says this after that about you, okay? God cares about you, and the reason why he went to the cross is because he wanted to give these things to you. Finally, brothers, finally, after you know how to take your anxiety and give it to God, God says, I want to make you pure, I want to make you true, I want to make you noble, I want to make you right, I want to make you lovely, I want to make you admirable, I want to make you excellent, I want to make you praiseworthy. That's what God wants to do with us. So that your life Mimics that. And you say, that's impossible. My man, I got so many flaws. How can I always ever be that way? But God made us sons and daughters, and by making us sons and daughters of His, and He gives us the Holy Spirit, those are the things that God's going to put in our lives if we surrender to His lifestyle. That's how much He wants this relationship. So that when you look at the words of this, Get it to turn here. What is true? Not counterfeit. Genuine. Steady to the truth in God's realities. That's what God can do for us. Next one. What is noble? Upgrade. Honor. Dishonorable. Taking on God's character. In other words, about whatever is degrading, and don't go about those things. You're noble. You're taking on God's character. That's what God says you can do. He believes in us. Then we take the next one. It says, uh, there it is. whatever is right. What is straight, direct, proper, just, current, for conforming to the constitution of God, men and women, God's will. Take the next one. Sure, you get to do that one on your own. Okay, then we go to the next one. <laughs> Whatever is lovely, pleasing by 
displaying God's love, admirable, having qualities of any kind that is ex excels God's ways. Whatever job my admirable, wonderful, winning person, splendid worker, acts in godly way. Come on. Excellent. Surpassing good acts or qualities, well done, the best, strong, moral character. Praise commendable, applaudable, response with grace. I need to take that verse later. Okay, now when you look at all these things that we just went through. All those qualities that God's talking about, pure, admirable, praiseworthy, and so forth, you look at the definition of them. We say to ourselves, I don't know if I can do that. Yes, you can. Why? Because you have the Holy Spirit in you. You have God in you. And you surrender your life to a walking, talking relationship with Him, and you don't want your way anymore. So when it comes to all the issues that the world is throwing at us, they're called the scud of Satan that's trying to distract you, and he's trying to tell you you can't be that way. You can be that way because you have the power of the Holy Spirit that's in you to make it possible to change the life. Now, I believe this, that we will never be perfect because we're human beings. But God knows that we can work on all these things all our lives, and we can become stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger in walking with God so that we then can reach out into the world. Okay, so then what you do is you look at the next step. God, you therefore, brothers, by the mercy of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not conform to this world, but be transformed by renewing in your mind that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. <laughs> Transform mind. Who transforms our mind? The Holy Spirit. So the more that we gather together and we worship Him in the Bible, the more we read our Bible, the more we get involved with God, the more we walk with God, the more we work on it, He transforms our life. We can become more and more, more mature. We become stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger because we've surrendered. We've surrendered our lives to a walking, talking relationship with Him. And we're not going to allow the world to change us. Peer pressure is not going to change me. Circumstances are not going to change This political correctness crap that goes on in work, we're not going to let it change me. Because political correctness to me means you shut up because we don't want to hear about God. Now, the workplace is tough. You can still stand strong, can't you? You don't have to change. You don't have to bow down to that. Because in America, we have the freedom to stand up and make God count in our lives and our family's lives. And we don't need to back down. And I'm afraid that with what happened in our world today, that it could be the Lord's return soon, that many people are going to be, as Christians, are going to get caught up in the lie and say, I want the finances. I don't want to lose my job. Because I look at it, this situation, I think the situation is getting so ugly, and I don't know how it's all going to work out. <clears throat> I'm glad God's in control, because I'm not going to be anxious about it. I'm not going to worry about it, I'm not going to be troubled with it, but I'm going to be as smart as I can be, and I'm going to stand up to the Lord. But if we fall into a new world order, and everything changes, and we lose our freedom in America, they could possibly go to Amazon and say, you need to bow down to the New World Order and you can have all your millions back. And if you don't, and they may even be the mark of the beast, it might be the same situation as the book of Esther, where Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego did not bow down. And we may have to say, I will not bow down. The world may get that ugly. I'm not saying it's going to, but it's certainly getting ugly, isn't it? So what we need to do in the workplace is we're going to, because what's going to happen is they're going to bow down because they want their money. <laughs> and then they're going to turn around and say, Leonard, if you want to keep your business that you've built for over 42 years, you need to bow down too. And I said, no. I love the Lord. I trust the Lord. 
I'm not going to be anxious. I'm not going to be concerned about what's going to happen because God will take care of me. He takes care of the flowers. He takes care of the birds. He takes care of everything. He'll take care of me. And I trust Him. Period. And I don't know how soon that will be ugly for us, but it's certainly turning ugly already, isn't it? In the workplace, we need to stand up and let people know where we stand because then the world will see the light and the hope that only you can give them because nobody else can. They're looking for people that will stand. God's looking all over the earth and saying, where are those people that will put me first? <clears throat> and that's what we need to do. Put him first and God will take care of the rest of it. In fact, we might even get to the point where they're going to tell us that I'm 68 and I'm turning 69 and they may say, well, at 65, you don't get any more health care. It sure looks like it's going. But I also know, you know, God wants me to continue jabbering to people and presenting the gospel. He's going to keep me healthy. If he says no, I'm taking you out. I said that's fine with me too. Because I have peace with God. But I will not, not stand up for the Lord ever. Because he's my freedom. He's my joy. He's my life. And I'm not going to let family circumstances, I'm not going to let work situations, I'm not going to let the little gods out there that have all these studs that are thrown up at me ever make my life change. Because I'm going to walk with God all the way. So now when you look past this, maybe, it's possible because of the Spirit. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. Why is there no law? Because we're above the law. We're not living by the law. We're living by love relationship with the Lord. Then we get the fruits of the Spirit. So it's the Spirit that does those things, not us. Because our flesh we don't, won't do it. Our flesh won't do that. So a surrendered life will do that because the Holy Spirit is doing it through us. The only reason why I approach people and talk to people is because I love the Lord so much that I don't want to see anybody die and go to hell. I don't even want... Maybe I don't want to say that. I think of this chaos that's going in the leadership of our country today. I don't even want them to go to hell. Why? Because hell is ugly. And it's for eternity. So my prayer is that they find Jesus Christ personally. If they find Jesus Christ personally, they then will find freedom. What the devil is offering them is hell. When I stop to think of the verse, what is the profit of man that gave the whole world? Get all the money in the world. Do all the things that you're doing. It's interesting for me to get the politics, but I won't do it, okay? <laughs> you can do all that and make your millions. What does it profit you? Because you're going to die at the Feast of Atonement. God's going to do blood purification of the earth. And you're going to, at the end of that judgment, your blood is spilled. Then you're going to hell. And I am actually that strong. I had a guy come in my warehouse just Saturday. A fellow that I've been talking to over and over and over and over again. He's strong, starch, starch, moral. And I went to the to the path of salvation. I said, I want you to understand something. Because I don't want you to see that I, how it's unclear. I'm going to show you the gospel. And I showed him the path of salvation. It's either Jesus' blood or it's your own blood. He said, no, it's the Mormon church. I said, no, it's not. The church is the people that believe Jesus Christ is the Messiah and take what he did on the cross for yourself and you apply it to your life and you start walking. He says, no. He goes and I said, no, listen, he, he, you can see he was getting frustrated. He says, I love you, I love you. We can talk. I said, I love you. That's why I'm sharing this. Because I want you to know clearly what the gospel is because when all hell breaks out here in America, you're going to see that your religion is not going to make it. It's a relationship with Jesus Christ that will make it for you, not your religion. And our world is filled with religion that will never make it. The church is the body of believers that love Jesus and you need to be surrendered to that life. Then you will live like you've never lived before. And unless you do that, you will never have peace. And I'm more emphatic about it now than I've ever been. Be in love. And the reason why I'm so emphatic is because of the way we're living. Our world is totally upside down. 
And they're not hearing the truth. Because a lot of the Christians of the workplace are compromising too much and not willing to stand up the way God wants us to stand up wherever we're at. We're not standing up in our homes like we should. And I'm not pointing fingers at you because a lot of you guys are doing it. A lot of people are doing it. We're all fighting. We're all dealing with all this stuff. We come together because the Bible says don't forsake your something together, especially when you see the day of my approach. And we're certainly seeing the days of his approach, and we need each other definitely that. Because we need to support one another. We need to love each other. We need to understand the battles that you're going through. We can do this together because we have God in our lives. We have the Holy Spirit in our lives, and the Holy Spirit through us are really feeding each other so that we can become stronger. Isn't that right? So our flesh becomes stronger because we're letting the Holy Spirit build up in our lives and we're letting the Spirit build us as strong characters in Him to be all that God wants us to be. And if we're all that God wants us to be, we will get through this storm because it's just a storm. Aren't you lucky I don't preach every week? Yeah. <laughs> 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 I was just talking to little children. You are not from God. You are from God. And have overcome that. For he who is in you is greater than he is in the world. We have the Holy Spirit. And when you're in situations, I'll just say this story. You see, I'm watching the watch here. <laughs> I, I, what happens is you get yourself in mind. I ran ahead of God. I got myself in a financial situation with the Amazon business. Because I was working ahead of the Lord and saying, I'm doing He's blessing me, blessing me, blessing me. Because He knows my heart. My heart wants to do the right thing. But the flesh says, You know, I, I can borrow more money and I can build this thing because I walk in faith, a lot of faith. Lord, I trust you, I trust you, I trust you. But I run ahead of Him. And I'm in a financial chaos. And then I knew, I got to straighten that out and straighten the mess up. And I remember getting up in the morning, this was before I got an Amzo, which was a big part of Amzo too, because I was running trying to find my place where God wanted me to be, and I got in this big mess, okay? And I remember getting into the Amzo business, start building the business, and in the morning I'd say, this is the day the Lord has made. Let me rejoice and be glad of it, because it was ugly. And I'd have to say these verses, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world, because I didn't feel that way. But I knew I had to say that because I know that's the truth. So I have to feed on the truth, feed on the truth, feed on the truth. And pretty soon I can swing my leg out of bed and I can talk, I can attack the world. And pretty soon I find out that if you live that way, if you live that way, God is looking all over the world to find people that will live that way and will take our messes and turn it around for his good. He wants to see people that will walk with him. And if we walk with him, he'll take our messes and he'll straighten them up. And he did. And that makes me a stronger person because I can see how God works and we need each other to become stronger and stronger and stronger so that we can help each other. And then you'll go through battles that you feel that you shouldn't have to go through. But God says, I'm doing this for a reason. Because I'm allowing you to go through this so that you can help somebody else. You look at the situation, look at Ray and TJ. They can help people that you and I cannot help. Why? Because they've been there. Battles that we all have, we get in these, all these battles, and God says, I'm preparing you for something down the road. One of my biggest battles that I had was in a church situation trying to do what God wanted me to do. And I said a couple things. They got it disjointed. Because I said, the work of the ministry is the work of the, of the Lord, not people building empires. And a per person, I believe in dreams. I'm a person of dreams. I build business. I build stuff. And I simply said, God's word says that the work of the elders is to do the work of the ministry and God will give the increase. And it became an ugly, 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 ugly battle. And I don't want to get into it. But that same battle took place in another church we went to, and there were problems developing, and the young bucks, leaders, were doing the wrong thing, and I turned around and said, slow down. I've been there. And it all turned out for good. So if you don't go through the battles, I mean, we all go through the battles, but if we understand the battles and see how they went, God takes those battles and helps us in another situation because we are conduit for Him. The power of the Holy Spirit works through our lives to accomplish what He wants. 
but we have to have a surrendered lifestyle so that he can accomplish what he wants because it will never happen if we don't become conduit. I could not stand up here and be as bold as I am right now if it wasn't for that I'm conduit. I understand a lot of things because I've been there. I understand how God works. And I encourage, my gift is encouragement. My gift is exhortation. Hey, this works. It really works. And we fan each other and say, this really works. And i got a battle right now. you got to help that, don't you? Are you anxious about it? Of course you are. But God's in control. <laughs> He's going to the doctor on Monday to check out his kidneys to see what more was going on. You think that's a good battle? No, it's an ugly battle. You've gone through problems, right? Is God good? Yes. Definitely. Yes. Definitely. You've gone through battles, right? Is God good? How about you, Tristan? You see, I mean, God's good. God's good. You're going through a battle. Think God's going to take care of it? Yes, God's going to take care of it. I'm not going to go through the rest of my notes. I'm going to do this. Two verses. One verse says the Lord's Prayer. About the disciples were talking and they were saying, How should we pray? And God says, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Okay, you know that verse, right? You know it, right? Just think about that. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So God through the cross came to earth to give us heaven here on earth in the midst of the battle. Think of it. He wants us to understand heavenly things so they can live in a world of chaos. That's what he's doing. And we need to learn and understand that we have the kingdom of peace, not chaos. And the only way that we can have the kingdom of peace is surrender to that lifestyle so that the kingdom of peace can be here on earth as it is in heaven. And then someday, we're still going to battle. We're still going to have issues. We're going to have a battle of anxiety. But he's going to turn around and he's going to say, it's okay. And then there's the blessing that the Bible has to the Jewish people. Right? May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and give you his grace. And he lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. What that is is a blessing because you are trying your best to be what God wants you to be, and he will bless you. But if you're not walking with God, that prayer doesn't apply to you. But if you're walking with God, then we can bless. We can use those Old Testament words that God, may God bless you and keep you. You see what I'm saying? And he will do that. I do not believe in prosperity preaching. Prosperity preaching takes that out of context and says I can demand from God what I want. No, that's not the way it works. The way it works is you surrender your lifestyle, then he will bless you. But if you do not surrender your lifestyle, you cannot be blessed. We have children here, right? God, we are his children. Do we give our children something when they don't behave themselves? No, you're not getting that today. <laughs> Go to your room. Stand in the corner. See, what's going to happen is God says, I'm about ready to come. So the truth of reality is, he chastises those he loves, his children. So all these people that are walking out there, friends and relatives and acquaintances and all the people that are, know, you know they're Christians, but they're not paying attention. You sit down and you talk to them like I did my grandson. I said, listen, you like to be spanked? No. You like pain? No. Neither do I. I would rather walk with God and stay lined up with Him because God says He's going to chastise those He loves because He wants to straighten us out before He comes. Because He's getting ready to take the church home. And if we're walking with God, He's going to bless us, not spank us. So I'd rather not have a spank us. I don't like spank us, okay? I'm past that age. However, God will spank the older ones too, right? That's right. So now, when you stop to think about that, what we want to do is understand that with each other, and then we spill out to the world. 
fathers, become the father that God wants to do. Your responsibility as a husband and, and you have children, parent, to give them the kingdom of peace. Then it passes through the family, it passes to the kids, it passes on, and then it passes into the world. That's the pattern. Okay? So what we do is we take these things, whatever's noble, trustworthy, praiseworthy, and we think about that with each other. I look at Ryan and say, Him? You gotta be kidding! Look at all the things about him, I don't like it. Lord. God says, I did that with you, now you do that with Ryan. Okay, if I have to. Okay, Ryan, I love you. You see what I'm saying? So now what I want you all to do is look around and those things that we were talking about, praiseworthy, trustworthy, I want you to talk to each other and say how much you love each other and how much you care about each other. Just go ahead and talk for a few minutes about how wonderful you are. Mark, you're wonderful. You're up here leading music, right? Your wife's there with you by your side. You like doing it all the time? Absolutely. Absolutely. You love it. It's a ministry. It's what God put you there. We're blessed because of it. Now I want you to say the same thing around you, okay? I'll give you two minutes to do that and don't get off. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, Childish things. 
for now we see in the mirror dimly. But then, face to face, now I know in part, but, when, but then shall know just as I am known. And now abide faith, hope, love. These three, but the greatest of these, is love. Amen. That's what we need to make up. God's love pouring through our lives. Is the God of Let's pray. All right, dear Father, Lord, thank you. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the truth. <coughs> Lord, we thank you for the trials that we go through because we know they make us stronger and make us lean. And Lord, we thank you that Carol and, and the family are in this church that we can know them. And Lord, at the end of the, of the service today, Lord, we as a body of believers will love them because we know they're going through a battle, but you are the one that brought us all together so that we can bond together and be all that you want us to be. So thank you for that privilege, Lord. Thank you for the privilege that we can gather together to give you praise. In your precious name, Jesus. Amen. Amen.